Well, let's go over to the US now, where the former President Donald Trump was asked in front of a National Association of Black Journalists whether Kamala Harris was a diversity hire. Here's what he said. She was always of Indian heritage, and she was only promoting Indian heritage. I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black, and now she wants to be known as black. So I don't know, is she Indian or is she black? Well, let's bring in now the elections correspondent at The Federalist, Brianna Lyman. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, he's technically wrong there, isn't he, Donald Trump? Yeah, Kamala Harris is half uh, Indian, half Jamaican. That being said, I think what Donald Trump was trying to allude to is the fact that Kamala Harris is trying to play up half of her heritage while ignoring the other half to appeal to obviously black voters, because that is a voting block that Joe Biden was actually losing. Uh, you saw a lot of black voters who had really low enthusiasm rates with Joe Biden, uh, and Biden and the Democrats were headed for a 2016 repeat in which black voters in particular were so disillusioned with Hillary Clinton that they chose the couch as a third option, right? It wasn't Hillary, Trump, it was the couch. And Democrats risked that. So now they have to try to win back those voters. And I think that might have been what Donald Trump was trying to uh, convey, whether or not he did that the best way. That's up for, you know, everybody's own interpretation. Yeah. Look, it's been said that Kamala Harris brings out the worst in Donald Trump's instincts, that he often makes sexist comments about her. And, and we, I guess we're starting to see, or, or not necessarily sexist, but inappropriate comments about her, and we're starting to see that. Do you think that proposition is right, that the way he's responding to her isn't presenting him in the best light? Well, I, I would disagree a little bit. I would say that I have not heard Donald Trump say anything that was, you know, sexist, misogynist. And the problem is, is that in America, uh, you know, there's not a, a ton of conservative outlets, both on media, both on TV and in print. Um, and so they're kind of crafting the narrative. They have been known to lie. They're still lying. They're lying, actually, as we speak right now. I've read a dozen articles in the past 24 hours um, that really distorts what actually happened yesterday at the conference. Uh, when it comes to Kamala Harris, though, I think she does one thing. She agitates Donald Trump, and not for him to say anything that's sexist, misogynist, racist, but she gets him to speak. And if you notice a difference between the debate back in June to when Joe Biden dropped out, Donald Trump was quiet. This is a man who was tempered. And we know Donald Trump. He's never this way. And it was working for him. People were actually saying, where's Donald Trump? Like, why is he giving us news to focus on? We have to actually focus on the Democrats. Kamala is different. Donald Trump is now kind of forced to go out on the defense because Kamala is more active on the campaign trail. Kamala is taking hits at Donald Trump that Biden wasn't literally able to do because he was cognitively impaired. And let's have a look at one of those hits. Here was Kamala Harris responding to what Trump had to say. And it was the same old show. The divisiveness and the disrespect. And let me just say, the American people deserve better. The American people deserve better. So, uh, Brianna, it's a different candidate, but the campaign strategy is the same, which is focus on Donald Trump, the man, focus on his divisive character, focus on the chaos. And this is probably what we're going to see more of over the next few months from the Democrats. Yeah, and again, I think it's important that when we frame this, you know, Donald Trump is actually not a divisive figure. If you ask the American mainstream media, he's divisive. But if you talk to the average American, I mean, I have Democrat friends, uh, unfortunately, sometimes, um, who will literally say, yeah, like, actually, the economy was better under Donald Trump. Hey, things were safer under Donald Trump. I have friends who voted for Biden in 2020 that have changed their registration. So Donald Trump isn't actually the divisive monster that Democrats and the media have portrayed him as, but that is their playbook. And the problem with that playbook book is Joe Biden won in 2020 because his message was, I'm not Donald Trump, vote for me. And that worked because people were, you know, they were consuming mainstream media every day. They felt like there was some really big problem. But when you have four years of a Trump record versus four years of a Biden-Harris record, and she owns every bit of that record just as much as Biden, people start to think, well, what made my pockets feel better? Who allowed me to put more food on the table? Who allowed me to pay my bills with ease? And that's the problem that Kamala Harris will have to overcome with independent voters.